I'm Professor Jason. Welcome back to my Jumpstart Brazilian Portuguese course. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you 20 useful idiomatic and slang expressions in Brazilian Portuguese. We've got plenty to cover, so let's get started. Vamos começar! Alright, so as usual, I'm going to start off this video lesson with an overview of what you can expect to see and hear about today. So I'm going to present 32 common informal expressions in Brazilian Portuguese. For each of these expressions, I'll give you the expression in Brazilian Portuguese, including variations you may come across. For each, I'll provide an explanation or definitions, as well as some English equivalents if those exist. And then on each slide, you'll see examples of usage in Brazilian Portuguese that we'll comment on. But wait, before we dive into the 32 expressions themselves, I wanted to make some brief comments about expressions, informal expressions, and sort of the selection criteria I used when putting together this lesson. So the expressions you're going to find in this lesson are informal, but very commonly used, especially in speech and informal writing, such as in social media, texting, messaging apps, and things like that. Now, not all of them are slang, meaning like very new or used mostly by young people. Some are newish, but many are quite established, even classic expressions. Again, they're all really common, especially in speech and informal language. Informal language varies a lot by region because Brazil is a gigantic country. But the ones I've chosen for this lesson are understood in every region and city of Brazil. Some are simple interjections or exclamations, while others require more elements to complete a thought or sentence. Now, since these expressions are informal, you'll see contractions and abbreviations, things like se, to, ne, ta, etc. And they're often used with diminutive forms of nouns, adjectives and adverbs. So, gachinho, right? livrinho, essas coisas. Now, these are presented primarily for recognition. Be careful about using them unless you're sure how. And that's what this lesson is going to teach you. All right, here we go with our first expression, and this one is ainda bem, ainda bem que. This is used to express a sense of relief. So equivalents in English would be things like, what a relief, thank God, or it's a good thing that, examples in Portuguese, a minha irmã terminou com o namorado dela. Ainda bem, thank God, aquele cara era um chato. Ainda bem que conheci você. Você me ajuda com meu português. What a relief. I'm so glad that I met you. You helped me with my Portuguese. Você ainda mora nessa rua barulhenta? No, eu já me mudei. Ainda bem, né? All right, the next expression is bater papo. Bater um papo. Colocar o papo em dia. Here the word papo means the activity of talking, chatting. So, bater papo means to chat or to talk to someone, colocar o papo em dia is to catch up with someone. For example, vamos marcar de sair qualquer dia desses para a gente bater um papo. Vocês vieram à aula para estudar ou para bater papo? In this example, right, the professor is asking the students, did they come to study or to talk? Nossa, quanto tempo que não nos encontramos? É verdade, precisamos nos reunir para colocar o papo em dia. We need to get together to catch up with each other. Bater papo, colocar o papo em dia. Okay, moving on to beleza. Beleza is used to express agreement or to ask if something or someone is okay. So, equivalents in English range from great, cool, agreed to sound good, you doing okay? It just depends. This one is super flexible as well as super common. Look at some examples. O filme começa às 19 horas. Vamos sair às 18. Beleza. Cool. Sounds good. Te ligo mais tarde. Beleza. I'll call you later. Sound good? Beleza. Affirmed, right? Agreed. E aí, cara? Beleza. How you doing? You doing okay? E aí, amigo? Tudo beleza. I'm great. E você? Como é que está? Okay, this next set of expressions all involve boa. So it's ficar de boa. Estar numa boa, or numa boa, de boa. Various <laughs> sort of different iterations of boa. So it means to relax or to chill, to express something, to express that something's no problem, right? Whenever you're using an expression with de boa, numa boa, it's everything's okay, everything's cool, 
right? So just relaxing, just chilling, no problem. It's okay, it's all good. Let's look at some examples. Trabalhei muito nessa semana. Trabalhei muito essa semana. Hoje eu só quero ficar de boa. Today I just want to chill. I've worked a lot this week. Levei meu, levei meu cachorro para viajar e ele foi numa boa dentro do avião. Ele foi numa boa, right? He went on board the plane, no problem. Ele foi numa boa. Amiga, desculpa pelo atraso. De boa, não tem problema. De boa, right? It's all good. There's no problem. Okay, this next expression you will see a lot in social media, texting and things like that. It's the word bora plus a verb. I think this might come from the expression vamos simbora or the shortened form simbora, right? So it's used to ask or invite or encourage someone to do something and to accept. Equivalent expressions in English are do you want to do something? Are you up for doing something? Or let's go do it. Examples. Bora ver um filme or bora malhar, right? You want to go see a movie? You want to go work out? Bora. Person says, yeah, let's go. Bora. Vamos ao cinema. Bora. All right, this next one is an oldie but a goodie, a definitely a classic. Cadê? Cadê? Cadê is used to ask where something or someone is. So where is, in English, it's just simply, where is something or someone? Cadê o controle remoto da TV? Where's the remote control? Cadê? Olha, um helicóptero. Cadê? Where is it? I don't see it. Cadê? So you can use it alone, right, in response. Olha, um helicóptero. Cadê? Or, where is Maria? Cadê a Maria? Or you might get a text like this if your wife is expecting you at home or your girlfriend and you're not there. Look at your phone. Cadê você? Shortened version for texting. Cadê você? Where in the world are you at? Cadê? Super, super common. Okay, the terms cara and mano are slang. They mean dude, guy, bro, bra, etc. Very common. E aí, cara? Tudo bem, com, tudo bem contigo? E aí, cara? Cara, preciso te contar uma coisa. Fala, mano. Right? Hey, dude, I need to tell you something. Fala, mano. Tell me, dude. Amiga, olha que cara bonito. Tô apaixonada. Amiga, olha que cara bonita. What a cute guy. Cara, mano. All right, this next expression, cara de pau, cara de pau, um, it also exists in Spanish, right? Cara de palo, cara de palo, cara de pau. To refer to someone who has no shame, or a person with a lot of nerve, who's not easily embarrassed, or, you know, in a more complimentary way, maybe, who's very audacious or overly bold, right? So, cara de pau, he's got some nerve. Ele mentiu, ele mentiu. Olhando nos meus olhos. Ele é muito cara de pau. Ele mentiu olhando nos meus olhos. Ele é muito cara de pau. Right? He's got some nerve. Não acredito que você faria isso. I can't believe that you would do this. Você não seria tão cara de pau. You wouldn't be that shameless. Cara de pau. All right, this next one is also super common and kind of a classic especially the first form, combinado, combinado. Also, fechou, fechou. They both mean or, or are used to express agreement or to accept something, right? So in English, it'd, it'd be like, deal, sounds good, all right, agreed. Então fica, então fica combinado assim, né? Vamos nos encontrar às 20 horas. Então fica combinado assim, né? So it's agreed, we're going to meet up at 8 o'clock. And the person could say, fechou, combinado. Look at the next mini dialogue. Eu escolho a comida, você escolhe a sobremesa. So I pick the meal, I pick the food, you pick the dessert. Combinado, deal. Combinado, or fechou. You can use them interchangeably. All right, in earlier drafts of this lesson, I had these three or two of these three separated out and folks convinced me that they really kind of mean the same thing. Three expressions, deu ruim, lasco, and ferrou. Deu ruim, lasco, and ferrou. 
They're used to express that something turned out badly, didn't go well, or pardon my French, went to shit, right? So it means it, that went terribly. Or you could, it also means in the sense of like, oh my God, I'm screwed, or that person's screwed. Let's go, right? Let's look at some examples. Cara, deu ruim. Minha mãe descobriu que eu menti. Deu ruim. So in this sense, it could really be, I'm screwed, right? I'm screwed. My mom found out that I lied. Como foi a prova? Como foi a prova? Deu ruim. Foi horrível, right? The test really went badly. Lasco or ferrou. Cometi um erro horrível e acho que vou ser demitido. Cometi um erro horrível e acho que vou ser demitido. Lasco. So, I screwed up. I'm screwed. Something went terribly. Deu ruim. Lasco. Ferro. All right, next we have a super informal, but a very, very common. So you can see, right? Just because an expression is super duper informal doesn't mean that it's uh, uncommon, right? It can be extremely common across all kind of socioeconomic backgrounds and in a variety of contexts. This is one of those. The very short expression, iai. So it can be a very formal greeting, very, excuse me, very informal greeting, like, hey, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up? E aí, cara, tudo bom? E aí, cara, tudo bom? The first example is in that sense, right? Hey, what's up? It can also be used to introduce a question, like, okay, so what do we do now? Minha mãe descobriu que eu bati o carro dela. Minha mãe descobriu que eu bati o carro dela. So she found out I wrecked her car. E aí, o que ela falou? Não chegamos a tempo para o filme. We missed the movie start time. Não chegamos tempo a tempo para o filme. E aí, o que o que que a gente faz agora? E aí, o que que a gente faz agora? I'm guessing that if you're watching this video, you already have enough Portuguese that you know this one, right? The terms gato or gata and the diminutive forms gatinho, gatinha, right, are simply slang for that's a hot guy. That's a hot woman, right? Minha vizinha é uma gata. Minha vizinha é uma gata, uma gatinha. Nossa, aquele cara é muito gato. É muito gato. He's super hot or she's super hot. Gato, gatinha. Again, be careful about how you use these, but it's a super uh, common slang expression. Another really common slang expression, very brief, is the expression follow, follow. It's just an informal way to say goodbye or you're welcome, right? So it depends. It's flexible. Galera, já estou indo embora. Falou. I'm out, right? See ya. Falou. Estou indo embora. Falou. I'm out. Or, falou, mano. Falou, parceiro. Just two dudes saying goodbye to each other. Obrigado. Falou. You're welcome. So this next example also uses the firm follow, but adds tudo, and it changes the meaning. Follow tudo, follow tudo. This is used to express an emphatic agreement with whatever the other person just said. It's like the newish expression in English, preach, right? But it means you said it, or you got that right. Esse é o pior filme que eu já vi. Perdi meu tempo. Follow tudo. Também acho. You got that right. I also hated that movie. Precisamos nos organizar melhor. Senão o trabalho vai... Não vai dar certo. Precisamos nos organizar melhor. Senão o trabalho não vai dar certo. Falo tudo. You got that right. You said it. Here's an expression. Fazer questão. Or não fazer questão de, that for some reason I really like in Brazilian Portuguese. It means to insist on doing something, to make a point of doing something, or not. To not care about doing something, to say that to you it's not a big deal. Look at the examples. Não precisa pagar a conta inteira. Vamos dividir. Let's split up the bill. De jeito nenhum. Which is another interesting expression. No way. De jeito nenhum. Eu faço questão de pagar. Eu faço questão de pagar. I insist. I insist on paying. Eu faço questão. Right? Or, 
Não faço questão de chegar cedo. I don't care about getting there early. It's no big deal to me. Eu não faço questão de chegar cedo. Okay, now we've arrived at a slang expression or set of expressions that you have to be extremely careful about using uh, if you're a non-native speaker because foda or que foda, they come from a verb foder or fuder um, that is ex considered extremely, extremely vulgar in Brazilian Portuguese, right? It's sort of the synonym of another verb or expression that starts with F in English. So be careful with this one, but it's great to be aware of what it means. Uh, foda or que foda in the positive sense means, ah, that's awesome, that's amazing, that's really cool, que foda. It can also be used to express a negative sensation, right? In the sense of, that really sucks, or man, that sounds really complicated, whatever you're dealing with. So here are some examples of foda or que foda. Passei na faculdade, que foda, parabéns, congratulations, that's amazing. Or this music is, um, this song is amazing, it's so cool, that song. Aquela música é muito foda, aquela música é muito foda. Here's one that's a little bit more of a negative tone. A situação tá foda para mim. Tô desempregado e não consigo arranjar nada. Então, a situação está foda para mim. Again, slang expression, be careful about using it um, unless you're 100% sure that the context is right and the company. Here's another one of my favorite expressions for some reason in Brazilian Portuguese. Já era. Já era. Just sounds cool. Já era. So, já era is used to express that something's over and it's too late to do anything about it. <laughs> it's over. That ship is sailed. It can also be used in the sense of, I'm screwed, that person's screwed. Just like we saw just a few slides back with lasco or ferro, right? Let's look at some examples of já era. O tempo está acabando e o professor vai recolher a prova. So, time's running out. Professor is about to collect the, the quiz or the, the exam. Já era, não consegui terminar. I'm screwed. I wasn't able to finish. Já era, or like, it's over for me, right? It's over for me. I wasn't able to finish. Nosso plano deu errado. Já era, não tem mais o que fazer, right? Our plan didn't work out. Já era, right? We're screwed. Or it's over for us. O relacionamento deles já era. Já era o relacionamento deles. Já era. It's over, right? It can't be saved. <laughs> that ship is sailed. Acabou. Here's a set of slang expressions or words. The first one is much more of a classic, right? Not even really slang anymore at this point. Legal. The others, massa, maneiro, maneira, maneiro or maneira, bacana, right? Maybe a little bit more recent, I'm not 100% sure of that. Definitely more slangy sounding to me. But they mean awesome, cool, dope, fire, off the chain, etc. Fui promovido no trabalho. I was promoted at work. Bacana, parabéns. Bacana, parabéns. Essa música é muito maneira. Essa música é muito maneira. A festa de hoje vai ser massa. A festa de hoje vai ser massa. So you could flip those two, right? You could say, Essa música é muito massa. Ou a festa vai ser muito maneira. Awesome. Off the chain, dope, cool. All right, this one, very well known. I'd be surprised if you weren't familiar with it, but não é? Não é? Né? These are tag questions, right? We have these in English and other languages as well, obviously. This one means, right? Am I right? Or isn't it, in the sense of, isn't it true? So let's look at some examples. Aquela menina tão chata, né? And sometimes it's just rhetorical, right? It's a tag question, but sometimes people will actually answer. Aquela menina tão chata, né? And so the friend might say, é, or ela é. A gente vai para a festa, né? Com certeza. Okay, here we have a couple of expressions very common used to express surprise or shock. Often in a positive sense, but it, they can also be used in a negative sense. So we have nossa with variations like minha nossa or nossa senhora. Nossa, it comes from nossa senhora, right? 
Um, or, caramba, caramba, nossa, caramba. And they mean, wow, whoa, geez, or damn, right? Nossa, que celular cara. Wow, what an expensive cell phone. Damn, what an expensive phone. Caramba, como você ficou linda nessa foto, amiga. Caramba, como você ficou linda nessa foto, amiga. So you can see, used to express surprise, shock, right? So we just saw the expression, caramba. This one here, adding para ou pra before it changes it a little bit, right? So when I say para caramba or pra caramba, it means a lot. It's an adverbial expression, usually modifies a uh, verb phrase or, or an adjective, as we see in the examples here. It means a lot. Or as the kids say today, AF, meaning as bleep, right? So consider these examples. Tô cansado para caramba. Tô cansado para caramba. I'm super, I'm super or very sleepy, right? Ela ficou feliz para caramba com o presente que ganhou. She was super happy, right? Super happy uh, with the present that she got. Happy as bleep, right? Ela ficou feliz para caramba, para caramba. All right, so this expression uses the verb partir, right? To leave, to depart, plus a noun. It's similar to one we saw a few slides back with bora, right? Except in this case, we're using partiu, the third person simple past form, partiu, plus a noun. With bora, we're using, we're adding a verb, right? Partiu plus noun is used to say that you're off to do something, let's go somewhere, or to invite someone to go with you, right? So we're off to this place, let's go to this place. Wanna go to this place? Partiu praia? Let's look at some examples. Hoje eu tô de folga. I'm off. Partiu festa. Partiu festa. Let's go to the party. Or maybe let's have a party. Partiu festa. E aí? Tudo mundo pronto? Is everyone ready? Partiu praia? Partiu praia? Should we go to the beach? Partiu. Let's go. We're off. Vou terminar esse relatório do trabalho. E depois, partiu casa. And afterwards, I'm heading home. All right, on this slide, we have a series of expressions that are related, very closely related, both sort of in terms of their spelling and their derivation, but also in their meaning. So we have poxa, poxa vida, and putz, okay? So they're used to express disappointment and even a bit of solidarity or surprise. So English equivalents would be something like damn or dang, that really sucks. Or in the case of puts, crap. Poxa vida, não acredito que nosso plano deu errado. Poxa vida, dang, I can't believe our plan didn't work out. Poxa vida, right? Puts, que azar. Puts, que azar. Perdi o dinheiro que estava no meu bolso. Crap, right? Crap, I lost the money that was in my pocket or that was in my bag. Okay, the series of expressions you can see on this slide, sacou, tá ligado, entendeu? They all mean, did you get it? Did you understand? Do you follow me? So they used to ask whether someone understood something or got it, right? Não posso sair mais tarde. É que eu vou estudar. Tá ligado? É que eu vou estudar. Não posso sair mais tarde. Tá ligado? Understood. Do you follow? A gente passa na casa dela e vamos juntos pro cinema. Sacou? Do you follow? Did you get it? Understood? Right? We're going to go by her house and then we're all going to, to the movies together. Sacou? Understood? All right. Here's one that you see a lot, especially in texting, instant messaging, on social media posts, right? And it's sextou. Sextou. It's finally Friday. That's what it means. It comes from the from the expression or from the form sextafeira, right? Friday. Sextafeira. Converting it into a verb in the simple past third person. Sextou. 
TGIF is what it means. Thank God it's Friday. Sexto galera, finalmente. It's finally Friday. Último dia pro fim de semana. Sexto. Here's one that you'll run across almost any time you hear any extended discourse in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, because tipo has a couple of uses. One of them is just as a discourse marker. So when you hear people in English talking and you hear them, well, like, like, right? That's a discourse marker. And tipo has the exact same function in Brazilian Portuguese discourse. And it almost it also means, um, for example, so you can say tipo before you provide examples. <laughs> tipo assim. Eu gosto de frutas vermelhas. Tipo morango e framboesa. Eu gosto de frutas vermelhas. So I'm going to give examples and say tipo morango, strawberry, e framboesa. So in that one, in that first example, tipo literally means for example. In the second example, it has more of that discourse marker function. Like when we say, like I just did, like when we say in English, like. Ela falou que tipo, se eu fosse para festa, ficaria de castigo. Ela falou que tipo, se eu fosse para festa, ficaria de castigo. Here it's simply a discourse marker. All right, believe it or not, we're getting close to the end of our list of 32 expressions. This one is tô fora, tô fora. I really like this expression too. Um, it's used to express that a person is not at all interested Sorry, the typo. Sorry about the typo on the slide. Not at all interested in participating, right? So English equivalence would be, I'm really not interested, or probably more precisely, count me out. Count me out. Don't include me in this. Então, festa hoje, festa hoje à noite, tô fora. Festa hoje à noite, tô fora. Quero dormir cedo. Party tonight, count me out. I want to sleep early. Tô fora de acordar cedo amanhã. Tô fora de acordar cedo amanhã. Quero acordar bem tarde. So, I'm not interested in getting up early tomorrow. I want to sleep in. Tô fora. So, there's a verb in Portuguese, topar, which when you use it in these expressions, você topa, or topa fazer x coisa, right? Topa fazer, and then a verb, it means, are you up to doing something? Are you interested in doing something? So it's used to ask or confirm interest in doing something. Um, when you confirm, it can mean, count me in. So, eu topo is the opposite of what we just saw on the previous slide, right? Eu topo is the opposite of, tô fora, okay? So you can think of them that way, right? Tô fora or eu topo. Você topa almoçar comigo hoje? Você topa almoçar comigo hoje? Topo? Of course I'm up. I'm up for it. Count me in. Topo. Vamos convidar a Amanda pro cinema. Acho que ela vai topar. I think she's going to be down for it. Você topa uma sobremesa depois do almoço? Você topa, right? Are you interested in? Are you down to have dessert after lunch? Eu topo. All right, this set of expressions Vai rolar or não vai rolar are used to ask or confirm if something's actually going to happen or not, or if something is still on or if it's not, right? Um, so in English, these would be like, okay, is this thing still on? Is it still happening? Or in the negative sense, no, it's not happening. It's not going to happen, okay? E aquele almoço que, a, que você me prometeu? E aquele almoço que você me prometeu? Vai rolar? Right? So what about that lunch you promised? Is it happening? No vai rolar, cara. It's not happening. Tô ocupado essa semana. I'm very busy. No vai rolar nada entre nós dois? No vai rolar nada entre nós dois? Achei que você gostava de mim. So, nothing's gonna happen between the two of us? I thought you liked me. No, no vai rolar nada. <laughs> nothing's happening. It's not happening. No vai rolar. This next one is not even really an informal expression. It's just a very common idiomatic expression. Vale a pena or vale a pena plus verb. Vale a pena. Vale a pena, if you're familiar with Spanish, obviously it's almost the same. Vale la pena. It means that something's worth it. It's worth the effort, right? Or that doing something is worth it. Examples. 
Acho que vai valer a pena a gente viajar esse fim de semana. Vai ser divertido. I think it's a great idea. I think it's worth it for us to travel this, this weekend. Será que vale a pena comprar esse celular? I wonder if buying that cell phone is worth it. É tão caro, mas ele é bom, né? Será que vale a pena? Vale a pena. All right, and we're down to our last two informal expressions. This one is valeu. Valeu. Super short, slang expression that means thanks or I appreciate it, right? Or as we say here in the in the lower mid Midwest, appreciate you. Okay? Valeu pela ajuda. Eu não teria conseguido sem você. I appreciate your help. Thank you so much for helping me. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Valeu. Appreciate you. Nossa, você me ajudou bastante. Nossa, você me ajudou bastante. Valeu. Thank you so much. Valeu. Very common way to say thank you. So our final expression is vamos lá or vamos lá. This one is our last expression, but maybe it should have been the first because I don't know if you've noticed, but at the beginning of my videos, I have a tendency to say, let's get started. And that's sort of one of the meanings of vamos lá, right? If you want to say, let's get started, you can use vamos lá. It's spelled vamos lá, but many times people will leave off or drop the S sound and it just sounds like vamos lá. So this expression is used to encourage someone to do something right to get someone excited or let's get to it let's get started vamos lá animação pessoal a festa vai começar vamos lá right trying to rouse up a crowd right or quero ver todo mundo batendo palma vamos lá i want to see everyone on their feet and clapping right come on vamos lá eu queria ver o carro que você vai comprar i want to see this car you're talking about buying então vamos lá all right let's go check it out então, vamos lá. All right, that's it for today's lesson. Hope you found it to be informative and useful. If so, would you please like, comment, and share with others? Don't forget to add and follow me on social media for updates, and be sure to come back to the Professor Jason channel again soon. See you next time. Até breve. Tchau.